Yes, I'm filming in a bathroom. Uh, the hard drive is defragging right now. I seem to be having some issues with my with the camera software for Windows 8.1. It seems to be airing out. It, it'll just cause totally aired videos. So, anyway, um, I just wanted to say to continue on with some of the things I said in my last video because seem, people seem to be uh, confused at something, and so I just need to be really clear, okay? For 20 years, I was lying to myself about my own beliefs. I would not admit to myself what my own beliefs were. And of course, if I'm not admitting it to myself, I'm definitely not going to be able to admit it to other people. So, I thought that my own conscience was God. Okay? I thought my own internal dialogue was, it wasn't God speaking type of thing, but it was like, <clears throat> influencing my ideas or something. I don't know, but I just thought it was like this inseparable thing. And I, I would have no idea that it was actually me. Um, so, I would tell myself, you know, a belief in, in God is irrational, and yet I would still have this belief that uh, uh, my own conscience was something outside myself. It was a very strange... I, I was into conflict with myself all the time. This is what I mean by terrible pain. Okay? Self-conflict. Total self-conflict. You just have no idea. You have no idea how much this has held me back. Okay, I'm going to admit something that maybe I shouldn't admit because I'll lose a lot of respect from people. And I'm, I'm very scared of, of admitting this. I'm, I'm, I'm terrified right now. Um, my panic uh, around 2009 had gotten so bad and my issues with... Um, with my obsessive compulsive uh, thoughts and uh, the ADHD and the Asperger's and um, everything had become, let's just put it this, if, if there's, if my mind is on a, a certain path, I'm, th I'm, I'm in this mode and I'm doing this certain thing then, and there's another choice. Okay, I'm still all right if there's another choice. Okay. Um, would a choice that would mean I would have to completely change my mode entirely, just entirely to go to this other thing. Okay, well now you add a third one that I'm supposed to choose right now. Do this now. You have to do this now. Choose or whatever. And if I, if I can't choose, and I set my mind, will try to split up all three of those things at the same time. Something in me short circuits. I literally, my speech center is gone. I won't be able to speak. It's, it's done. Just done. Completely done. It'll, it could be done for five minutes, 15 minutes. I think 15 is about the longest it's been gone. But just gone. Just completely gone. And... Anyway, um, this would happen in the workplace. This would... Um, I, I became someone that was unable to function. Like I've said, in 2006, I, there was a bad relationship that I was in that... Um,
Well, I'm, I'm just going to give more description, be more descriptive than I should, but oh well. Um, this third person he brought into the relationship, um, I wanted to try to make the best of the situation. I mean, I thought the person was attractive, so let's try to make the best of it. And um, so one night I uh, did something to him that got him to climax seven times in one hour. And uh, two days later, he tells me that, um, no, you cannot even accept a hug from me because it would be like inappropriately touching a small child. <clears throat> and uh, everything else uh, was all about declaring that everything, the way that I do everything, the way that I like to fact-check things, I like to know whether or not something that I'm thinking is correct or not, um, the way that I wrote music, the fact that I have this part looping over and over again while I try to come up with a melody line for it, um, just everything, everything he had some sort of problem with. And he... Um, Marijuana has been my thing, and he's all big, all big into the whole 12-step shit. So he tried to get me into the whole uh, N.A. thing, and uh, that's, he was saying, oh, it's the only way. So I gave it a chance, and uh, that, from that point on, is when the whole guilt and stuff really started to pour in again. And, uh, it started to destroy me. It started to just eat away at me. I, I left that relationship because I knew it was abusive. Um, I was done. But it still didn't mean that the, the damage hadn't been done already. And, uh, so by 2009, I, I was just a, a mess. I was a mess. I could not hold a job at all. Um, maybe two weeks, three weeks max was the, was the, the best it was at that point. Um, and I would just have these meltdowns. Something would click and I couldn't handle anything. So then for... So by 2010... Um, I, in 2009 and stuff, I was trying to apply for SSI, and by 2010, um, I had gotten it, um, but they had also finally found some medications that were able to take care of the, my, my panic and a lot of my issues. But uh, in those two years, I didn't realize that it was destroying me. It was making me become literally a stupid person. Um, I couldn't process much of anything. I had no daydreams. I had no creative thought at all. Um, and uh, by the time December rolled around, <clears throat> December of, uh, of last year, um, I, I was, I had, I almost committed suicide. And, uh, I knew I had to make a change. So I, uh, I started weaning myself off of the Zyprexa and had to face all that stuff all over again, all of the, <clears throat> the panic and all of that stuff by, uh, by around mid-March I was pretty much weaned off of it but was experiencing the worst, the worst feelings of my life, but I knew I had to push past it. I knew I had to get past it. I knew it would be hard. I knew I had to get past it, and I've gotten past it. By April, I was looking, trying to find everything about myself that there's, there's some sort of issue, there's some sort of fear, there's something, and find out, get to the bottom of it. 
So I started realizing, um, well, I guess I am kind of spiritual. Let's start to celebrate this. You know, if this is what I am, let's celebrate it. So I did. Um, and uh, I wanted it to be something that was non-judgmental. And uh, oddly enough, the more connected I felt with myself, the stronger this spirituality feeling got. So I started exploring that more. And uh, these thoughts that I'd had in the past about is God an equation or whatever started becoming a lot stronger and then that just really be started becoming my belief. And then, as you saw in those, those other videos, uh, um, as I'm just going through something in my mind, uh, it was just like, it's you. And it's been me the whole time. And coming to that realization has changed everything. Everything. Um, I may be able to make something of my life now. I, I was headed so far downhill. You don't know. I thought in my old age... I would be surviving on cat food. I thought I had no chance. I had given up on my life. And now I have hope. Because I know I'm capable of things. I know I'm a good person. And I know I can improve my life. And I know I can help other people's lives. And knowing this is just huge. Huge. I'm sorry if some of you have no respect for me anymore because I'm on disability. I'm sorry if you feel that way about me. But the things that I have accomplished for myself and the improvements that I have made have been astronomical. And I think I'll be able to really do something with my life. I'm st still very terrified right now. Because I just, I know how people are about anyone that's on disability. And people look at me and they're saying, you seem so capable. You don't know what happens to me. When you lose your speech center, it sucks. When you can't, when you, with just something short circuits and you can't process anything, it sucks. It's like having a blue screen of death in your head. So, um, anyway. Now you get some of the full story.